Here we go. We are looking at AP Physics C, electricity and magnetism. Free response question number one from 2006. In this, we have a square point charge distribution with a negative charge, negative charge, negative charge, and a positive charge. All these are fixed in place, and there's a point P in the middle that we are concerned about. Um, what we're trying to do in part one is just with a diagram, uh, indicate with an arrow the direction of the E field at the center at point P. Now, something to remember about electric fields is that they originate from positive charges and they will terminate on negative charges. Um, so we can kind of get like field lines that exist in such a way. Uh, because of this, there will in theory be a number of field lines we can draw going towards the negative charges at this point in space. And there will actually be a field line that would want to act away from the positive charge. Um, but since electric fields are vectors, we can add all of these vectors up. And we see that the vector going to the top left and bottom right here um, are actually equal in opposite direction. So they will divide or they'll uh, work against each other and add against each other to zero. Um, we see both the vectors from the negative top right charge and the positive bottom left charge are going to act up and to the right. And because of this, they can be summed together to give us just one vector right there. So that's the only vector we actually care about because um, that's the net vector at that point. Uh, in part B, we are looking for the magnitude of the electric field at this point. Kind of a pain in the butt because the electric field is a vector, but in this problem, uh, we kind of win due to symmetry. Um, we just talked about how the top left and bottom right charge, those vectors are gonna act against each other, and because of that, we don't care about them at all. Um, they don't matter to us. Uh, all we care about is the top right and this bottom left charge. Um, since both of them have charge Q and both vectors are acting in the same direction, if we can actually just find that electric field for one of the charges, we can multiply it by two and call it a day. Um, if we remember, an electric field is given to us by KQ over R squared. Um, we have K is just some constant, Q is whatever those charges are, uh, but R, R is that radial distance between the charge, and if we look at the positive one, to this point P, that is R. We're gonna run into a bit of an issue here though, because what we're given in the problem is that these sides are A. And that means if I wanna find this radial distance, I have to do a little bit of math to figure that out. With the Pythagorean theorem, I can find this whole side over here as given by C squared equals, and it would be A squared plus B squared, but both sides are labeled A here. So we quickly see that C is equal to the square root of two A. And I don't want C, I just want R, which is half of that length. So R can just be thought of as square root of two over two A in this case here. Uh, if I do this, I get KQ over the square root of two over two A, quantity squared. And then multiplying by this together, we get KQ over uh, root two squared is just two, a squared over four, which would then give us um, four k q over two a squared. And we get a two there. Remember, this is only for one charge though. We need to do it for both of them. Um, it, but since they're the exact same, we can just double this. So instead of it being two k q over a squared, we're gonna get four k q over a squared because both charges are the same there, okay? That's a, that's a big thing to remember. We've got both charges, and both charges are acting in the same direction, so they can add together positively. Um, for part two of this, we're looking for an electric potential. Remember, electric potential can be thought of as a voltage, and a voltage is just KQ over R. Great thing about a potential is that it is a scalar quantity, so you can just add them up. What this means is that we're gonna have this k over r value, which if we do remember, is root two over two a. And then our charges, um, we can say that they all have the same distance because they are all the same distance away, looking at this diagram. So we can just literally add up the charges here. We're gonna have a negative q, a negative q, a negative q, a positive q. That means two of these q's are gonna whoosh, whoosh, work away from each other. And then that means if we just kind of solve this out, we're gonna get a negative two KQ over 
and then this is going to give us root 2a over 2. Uh, if we wanted to clean this up a little bit, I'm not actually sure if I want to clean this up a little bit, um, but we very well could. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. We would find that we should have a value of like negative, oh, let's see, that's 4 root 2, 2 root 2, kq over, what's that left over, a in the denominator, that should be it. Right? So yeah, that's just what we'd have there. So nothing too crazy. A uh, big thing to remember is that it's a scalar. We can just add them all up. Um, for part C, uh, a positive charge is now placed at point P. Woo! Okay, so let's delete all this stuff we've got going on up here. We've got a positive charge now at point P and it's moved down to this point R right here. Um, what we'd like to know is the work done by the electric field positive, negative, or zero? Well, we know that the E field is moving away from this positive charge and going towards these negatives. And it will actually kind of look something like this around our edging. Well, when we move this positive charge down like this to point R, we're actually moving it against the direction of the electric field. Um, so we're actually moving back against it here. Uh, positive charge wants to follow the electric field. And since we're moving back against it, the work that the electric field is then doing can be thought of as negative. A positive electric field will push the charge where the electric field dictates. Positive charges follow the field. Because this is going backwards, um, we are having a negative amount of work being done. Um, we can state this uh, in terms of like I just did in terms of field directions there, um, or what you can say is you're moving to a higher potential. So you can do this with field directions. That's one way to do it. Or you can talk about because we're moving closer to the positive charge, we're moving to a region of higher potential. And since the electric field always wants to push to regions of lower potential, it must be doing a negative work in order to bring it up to a higher potential there. Okay. Um, in part D, uh, I, or D1, I guess, um, we are asked to replace a single charge in the configuration that will make the E field at the center of the square equal to zero, and to justify our answer. Um, and this, uh, we can get a quick point just by replacing, if we kind of do this, uh, if we replace this charge right here and we make it positive, that will make our E field symmetric everywhere. Um, the electric fields in all directions are gonna cancel each other out. They're gonna act against each other, so we'll get a zero. Uh, there is another way to do this though. If we replace the bottom left with a negative charge, that would also make the electric field symmetric throughout. Uh, we get a zero there. So all you're really saying there is uh, which one you'd like to replace there. You can either make the um, top right to be positive, or you could say that the bottom left became negative. Um, your justification just needs to be that, you know, upon this you have symmetry and the electric fields all cancel out. Um, for D part two, describe one way to replace a single charge in the configuration so that the electric potential at the center of the square is zero. So all this means for the E field to be zero is I need to have a equal amount of uh, positives and negatives because they're scalars, they'll just act away. But the electric field is not zero. So I want equal amounts of positive and negative, but I don't want anything uh, to be symmetric. So the way I could do this, if we go back to our original formation, whoop, is if I made the top left a positive value, then what I'd have is I'd have a electric field actually in the center pointing uh, directly to the right, so it's not zero, but my electric potential, my scalar value, would be zero. Um, I could also do this in the same way by leaving the top left alone and switching the bottom right to positive. I just kind of rotated the square. 
that would just give me an electric field now pointing actually directly up due to symmetry um, with the scalar potential being zero. So at the bottom here, I can just say I've got an equal amount of positive and negative charges. Um, I've replaced the correct charge and uh, I've you know pretty much just described to them why that's the case. I need equal amounts of charge, but I need those electric fields to not act against each other um, and not to uh, add in a way so that they'd be zero. So I'm looking for a I'm looking for a scenario where uh, I get out of it an electric field. Okay, so the electric field is non-symmetric in that regard, even though our charge distribution looks kind of symmetric. Okay, um, and that's it. That was kind of a quick problem. Um, this might pop up on our current 2020 test, um, given the fact that uh, we're doing the take-home test and they've kind of condensed some of the material. So I wouldn't put it past them to give us something like this. Um, so yeah, this is a great problem to take a look at uh, to get an idea of what to do with some point charges whenever you see them. But with that, uh, AP Physics C, E and M for your response question number one from 2006 is finished. Take it easy, everybody. Stay safe out there. Have a good one. Adios.